Some of Mears rocks, like granite for example, provide the link between average crust and an economic uranium deposit. Now this granite's in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado, and I'm going to use this gamma ray spectrometer to record the natural radiation that's coming out of the rock. At the moment it's reading background, but if I point it towards the outcrop, the numbers and the note that's produced by the buzzer correspond to the amount of uranium that's present. And that number represents about 50 parts per million of uranium in this granite. That's a considerable advance on average crust, which was four parts per million. I'm 200 meters below the surface in the Schwarzwalder uranium mine near Denver in Colorado. And the rocks around here are all like this. It's a dark gray, fine-grained Precambrian mica schist. Now the schists are cut by a complex series of mineralized veins. Here's one example, here's the top and here's the bottom of a mineral vein. And these are all very rich in uranium, so rich that they were too much for our sensitive spectrometer, so I've borrowed this one, which reads in percent, and it's recording just there between 5 and 6 percent of U308. The local geologists who have looked at the whole vein reckon that it contains an average of 4.4 percent. Now, the trend of this mineral vein, up this incline, at about 30 degrees, means that the technique of mining has to be adapted to take into account the nature of the deposit. And this technique is called stope mining. Once a promising zone of ore has been located using the spectrometer, it's peppered with drill holes that will be used to fire shots, so bringing down blocks of ore and advancing the opening or stope. The broken ore is moved down the stope using a bucket-like device known as a slusher. At the bottom, the blocks fall through a coarse screen into trucks which are hoisted to the surface. And here in the stope, the zone of economic mineralization is just a few tens of centimeters thick. This reddish material is the ore. It's red because it contains the iron oxide mineral hematite. Now then, with several percent of uranium, this is a rich ore vein. But of course it would be impossible to mine it in isolation. And to provide a reasonable working height, material from above the ore and sometimes from below the ore must be transported to the surface. So the thin localized nature of the uranium ore deposit means that all the material that reaches the surface from the mine must be sorted for grade. In the sorting plant, material from the mine passes over a light source on a translucent belt and is viewed from above by a solid-state camera, followed by a gamma-ray spectrometer. Information on the size of each fragment and its gamma emission are combined in a computer which controls an air blast. This causes fragments to fall either onto the ore conveyor or to the waste pile. The cutoff grade can be adjusted by reprogramming the computer. The average grade is 0.44%, and from the 70,000 tons of ore mined each year, some 250 tons of uranium are produced. Reserves of this kind in deep veins are dwindling. New reserves of high-grade ore are needed, and among the newest types of deposit to be investigated are different kinds of hydrothermal vein, an example of which lies in the remote region of northern Saskatchewan in Canada, at Key Lake. Lake mine is vast by open pit mining standards. It covers a total area of some 10 square kilometers. At the moment, the machinery behind me is clearing away a very thick succession of overburden. In places, it's 100 meters thick. Let's have a look what we can find in this little succession here. At the moment, I'm not getting much of a count. But let's see what we can find in this outcrop. Oh, we're getting more counts now. Counts are rising. And what have we got here? Here buried in the till, we have a black pebble of rich uranium nickel ore. It carries something like 50% uranium and 25% nickel. It comes from below us 
in the Precambrian basement from these veins that have formed the basis for this vast mine. The deposits here at Key Lake carry some 80,000 metric tons of recoverable uranium. When production finally starts, they'll be producing 6 million kilograms of uranium oxide per year, making this then one of the world's top three uranium producers. It could indeed supply 12% of the world's present uranium demand for two decades. Little wonder then that the operators have been willing to spend some $500 million just exploring and preparing for ultimate production. But in the first few years they will have paid off all of their debts and will become one of the world's most profitable mining ventures. Before production from the open pit mine can commence, they have had to lower the water table below the planned mining depth by draining local lakes. Once this was achieved, the thick sand overburden had to be removed and disposed of in an environmentally acceptable manner. Here, I'm in the King Solomon mine in western Colorado. This mine is working uranium in sandstones of Upper Jurassic age, about 160 million years old. Test holes are drilled into promising strata and are logged with a gamma probe. The mining system needs to be flexible to take account of the very rapid change in trend of the ore bodies. And here, room and pillar methods are used. About 80,000 tonnes of ore a year are produced at King Solomon, about the same tonnage but at a lower grade than from the Schwarzwalder vein. The simpler geology results in a less energy and manpower intensive mining system, which helps to make this lower grade deposit economic. This entire region of southwest Colorado is honeycombed with over a thousand old uranium mines. Few are still in production and most of their output is transported to a nearby mill, a man-made concentrating device where the ore is chemically processed into yellow cake. And that brings us full circle. The reason why we've examined the geology and occurrence of uranium ore deposits in such detail is to illustrate the sources of raw material that are available for the nuclear power industry. The rapid increase in the demand for uranium during the 1970s was based on the fact that hydrocarbon energy resources were thought to be rapidly dwindling. In the event, the uranium industry overreacted. And the rapid increase in the price of uranium was followed by a slump as the demand of the nuclear power industry turned out to be less than expected. Consequently, many small mines with lower grades of ore were forced to close. And it may be some time before the industry recovers. But of course, there's plenty of good uranium ore in the ground if and when required by the nuclear power industry.